Well, I've been planning to do a video like this for a long time, and this video is sponsored by iCure, and this is what's called a laser etcher. Now, for those of you who follow my channel, you'll know that I did one of these many, many years ago, at, not with this company, but with a, another kind that was not nearly as powerful as this. Now, I've been watching this industry for years, and I've been waiting for a machine that sort of bridges that gap between sort of a home hobby machine and something that's an actual big industrial machine. And this is the one that, just the way things have turned out, um, that I looked at, I was introduced to it, I had a look at the specs, and I thought, you know what? This looks like a really good machine that a woodworker could actually get some use out of. So today, I'm gonna to go through that and show you why I picked this machine and some of the accessories that I wanted that go along with it. There are many people who watch my channel who love woodworking, but for a whole bunches of different reasons they can't participate in it because of many things. Sometimes it's where they live, there's noise and dust and things like that that go on. And one of the reasons that I wanted to introduce a machine like this is for some people, this might be something you can get into and actually do some woodworking, have some fun and get immersed into it in a different way. And laser etchers have really come of age in the last little while. And we're gonna to see today why this one might be something that some people might want to have a closer look at. Now I want to have a quick look here. Apparently these come um, mostly assembled now. I know the last one that I did, um, it was all a bunch of bits and pieces that you had to put together. But uh, I think, so there's what it looks like. There's the manual, that's a pretty thin manual. Um, and there's the machine itself. And it's just like what I said, look at this, it's all together. It is all together. I don't know if I can lift that out, but you can see that. So there's, there's still some assembly to do, uh, but it looks like it's gonna be pretty simple. So I'm gonna take all of these components out, very well packed, and start putting some things together here. So. So there's not really very much to put together, although it looks like a few components. But look, even the little bags, uh, step three, step five. Um, so they're helping you out with that. But quickly, if we just look at this, there's the power supply with its cables. This is the air pump. This is an air assist. I'm gonna talk more about that later on. Uh, some miscellaneous cables here. This is a little screen. You'll see that in a few minutes. And this here is the laser head. This is what's going to create our uh, burning and etching and this is what's called a gantry and that's going to be sitting across here and that's the first thing that I need to start working on is setting this up because then the head is going to fit on that so I'm going to do that. Okay so that just sits right on those two pieces there and this lid just lifts off the top. The next thing to install is the head and it just slides in and there's already some set screws in there. All right, so I've got the machine together uh, and it comes with a very small manual. There's really not much to it, um, but it also has, if you want more detail, uh, it has a code in there that you can use your phone barcode to come bring up the, the site where you can get more detail and an operator's manual. Uh, but there's really not much to do if you just follow the steps. Most of the time that I took putting it together was just reading to make sure that I get everything right. And when you do all that, it just comes together nicely. I think it took me about an hour. But I'm going to go through some of the features of this machine and some of the things that you should know before you invest in a laser etcher. So the main reason I selected this machine is because it's a 24 or 48 watt power. And just by switching that, moving that little switch back and forth, you can switch between those powers, but a very powerful little machine. 
Another big plus for me with this machine is it is what's called an air assist. And what that means is this is a little pump that pumps air and you can see the hose coming out of it and it actually goes into the top of the head right there and it comes out of the bottom where the light is concentrated and the purpose of an air assist is when you're etching or burning if you can put air into that area it helps give you a cleaner uh, cleaner cut and for a couple of reasons it moves some of the smoke because of course laser is concentrated light and when you get concentrated light it creates heat and smoke so it clears out some of that smoke but it also helps to cool the area so that it makes a much better cut so and it's adjustable of course you can adjust the speed of the fan inside the pump inside a uh, very big plus Another nice feature of this unit is it has a separate screen. So if you don't want to connect this to your computer, you can use this screen and control what you're doing right on the unit. So one of the main accessories that I wanted with the machine is a place that will help lift your um, the work that you're working on up off the deck of your workbench uh, for a couple of reasons. You don't want to be burning your workbench, uh, but also it helps to cool and there's a safety issue that goes on by having these as well. So that's one accessory that you might want to consider at some point. So a couple of additional accessories that I got with this machine. Uh, I wanted to get a camera and the purpose of a camera is it helps you in the accuracy of what you're doing. It's not something you would, most people would not use all the time, but to help save on your material uh, and do some other accurate cutting, a camera is a really um, important thing to have. The other thing that I had, and this is really just for fun, and that's a rotary tool and that allows me to print on things like tumblers and uh, water jugs like this one. And I know some of you are gonna say, well, what part of woodworking is this? Well, in fact it is. For people that are doing wood turning, for example, uh, they might have bowls or things that they wanna turn, that they wanna embellish their wooden bowls or or urns, things of that sort. Uh, but also, I have a merchandise section in my uh, my website, um, and I might want to be doing some some mugs or some things like that, and maybe some special edition mugs or tumblers or something. So, I will be able to do that with this machine and with this tool. So, let's talk now quickly about the byproducts of working with wood and, and laser etching. So in a woodworking shop, the byproducts that we generate pretty easily are a lot of noise from noisy equipment, uh, but also dust and sawdust. Now we don't have those same byproducts with the laser etcher, but what we do have, and a laser etcher will come with special glasses because you're using very highly concentrated light. So you, you have to be aware that there could be eye damage and that's why you have special glasses to wear. The other thing that you're doing, remember we're etching wood. So we're etching wood or burning wood or cutting wood and that's that high intensity heat or light is going to create heat and smoke and fumes. So all of those things are byproducts. We don't have the dust to worry with, but now we have fumes or smoke. And we need to get rid of that because depending on what we're etching now, if it's just wood, we're just creating smoke, but um, that smoke is, is a result of burning. So there's a risk of fire and this unit has a fire detector on it. Um, but we also need to make sure that you're never leaving a laser etcher alone, that it's working by itself, because there is a, there is a risk of fire, just like there is in a woodworking shop. Um, and also we need to get rid of the fumes because sometimes we might be cutting things that aren't just wood, maybe they're um, plastics or things like that because we can etch all sorts of things and we need to make sure that we're exhausting all of those fumes outside so that we're not inhaling them. So you need to be aware of those things before you do any setup because you'll need to have some place where you can vent this stuff. And here's the shroud, one of the accessories that I got to go along with this to help me do that. And this was an important accessory for me for a few reasons. First of all, 
you know, you could make your own wooden covering for this, but this is um, fire resistant, this material that they have on here. Uh, and the whole thing, it's very thin material. As you can see, it folds up into a small area if you want to move it out of the way. It has a lid that pops down over top, so it covers everything. It also has the filters built into it, so you can actually watch, monitor what's going on. But what I like about it, look around the corner here. So it includes a little pump here, and there's the switch. And there you can hear the noise from it. So it's, this is the noise from the machine. It's not that noisy. You can uh, barely hear it over top of my voice. Um, so there's a little switch for that. And I have this vented outside. And that just vents right outside. And this is just a very simple system that I have for moving it in and out of the window. And it just sits in there like that. It sits in the window like that. And the window closes and I'm all ready to go. Now along the way I've learned another couple of things uh, that often aren't talked about and one of the things I've learned is that these machines, a lot of the plans, a lot of the information that you'll find is in millimeters and centimeters so it's metric and for those people that aren't familiar with metric you can purchase tape measures for example that have feet and inches on one side and centimeters and millimeters on the other and you know what these are so handy uh, I have this right handy by the machine all the time so that it gives me a little quick reference uh, just in my brain to sort of make that quick uh, exchange of distances and lengths and so on the other thing is this machine is it doesn't require it but it's a huge asset to have something called light burn and you can download it off the internet for Windows or for Mac a different version for each machine and what it allows you to do is to drive this machine it is a sort of a driver so you can do a couple things with it you can load plans into Lightburn and then use that to print them on your machine or you can create whatever it is you want maybe it's signs or letters or pictures uh, you can upload pictures into it which you can then use to burn onto wood for example um, so light burn is the name of the product yes there is a small charge for it I forget what it is off the top of my head but it's it's not uh, not an enormous price um, and it's a super handy little tool you're going to need to want to use it and you can get a free download of it to try it out uh, and of course there's are there are other products as well but light burn is a real uh, a real benefit to have when you're using on a machine like this so here's a little test piece of wood that I've been working on. You can see that I've been working on this area down here and uh, my inexperience, I have them overlapped here. But what I'm really wanting to show you is this thing here, which you can do in light berm and it's called material testing tool. And what it does, you can see how dark it is down here and it gets lighter and fades out to nothing way over here. And what that does is when you read these uh, sort of cross hatches here it will give you a speed and power to use for depending on whatever it is that you're wanting to do uh, if you want a darker area you, you of course would be going down here and if you want a, a lighter area you could do that so depending on the kind of material that's a good way of testing it but I also want to show you something else that I've done and this is, of course, that same logo, and it's just more of me testing the same thing. But what I want to show you here, if you notice this woodwork web at the bottom here, and you notice how burning it is underneath there, how, how browned it is there. And what happened right about there in the, in the etching, I turned the power assist way up and you can see how the tops of those letters how much crisper they are and that's because of the air assist and that's what that air assist does well that concludes my video for today and you know I've been working with this machine for a couple of weeks off and on and it is a bit of a learning process but I've wanted to know for some time is there a machine out there that can bridge the gap between sort of a small home hobby laser and at 10 or 15 $15,000 
big commercial laser. And this one does that. I think this machine is something that a lot of woodworkers could use that would augment their existing tools and, and make a significant impact in their creativity. And for people who are unable to install woodworking machines where they live, this might be something that you can get into. And there's smaller machines that they come in a little bit smaller footprint size. Uh, and there's a ton of things that you can do. The internet is full of great information on laser printers. I wanted to see if it does what it can do. And thanks to iCure and showing me this machine, uh, I'm pretty confident that it does. So Go and have a look for yourself and uh, make your own decisions. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.